If you are looking to master Airtable automations, this is the video for you. I'm gonna be breaking down some of the more complicated, more advanced features within automations in Airtable. So if learning more about this is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission here to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools. And one of our favorite no-code tools is Airtable. And in this video, as I already said, we are going to be diving into automation, specifically looking at some advanced automation techniques. We're gonna be focusing on conditional logic, uh, things like repeating tasks, those kinds of more advanced uh, features within Airtable automations. But before I get to all of that, I first want to invite you to join me to grab my Airtable templates. These are five templates that we put together. We offer them absolutely free. Each has its own accompanying video. And if you're getting started in Airtable or if you just want to use it more in your organization, this is a great starting place for you. Sign up for those templates at gapconsulting.io slash templates. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. We are here inside of Airtable and I'm gonna first outline the database schema that I built for us and then we can go into building an automation that includes all of these more advanced components. So let's dive in. All right, here we go. Number one, we have a projects table. And so I've got a name for the project. And of course I'd have more information like a due date or a start date and person assigned and all of that, but we're keeping it simple for the automation's sake. Then I have a project type. I've got two different types of project, project one type or project two type. And this is a single select field. So when I do a project, the idea here is maybe we have two different services. And depending on which of those different services that we sell, we're gonna have different tasks in order to assign tasks to that service, right? So if I picked project one, then of course I would see a certain line of tasks, whereas if I picked project two, I might see a different set of tasks. Okay, now we've got our tasks, and of course this is the linked relationship that we have to the projects table, so let's go ahead and get rid of the empty data here. But we would assign, you know, Every task is gonna have a due date, it's gonna get assigned to a person, all of this. Again, for our purpose, we're just gonna create these tasks with an automation. And then lastly, we're gonna flip over now to our third table, and this is where we've got a little bit of a template set up. So I really like using templates in Airtable. I like building kind of, you know, I don't know what you would call this, like a dummy table or a ghost table. It doesn't really serve any realistic purpose with the day-to-day -day data but it's where we kind of set up the rules for our automation. So let me group by this really quickly. And you'll see here that we've got four different tasks that are only assigned to project one. And then we have two other tasks, task A and B, and these are part of both projects. So if we sell project two, when we go to do this, we're gonna to have to complete task A and B. If we're doing project one type, then we're only gonna to need to uh, do A and B plus the other ones, one through four. So task or project one would have six different tasks total where project two, that type of project, would only have two different types of tasks. Now, the reason that I like to use kind of a dummy table like this is because if we change our process and I've hardwired this information into my automation, well then I have to go back in there and update it with all of the systems and changes within our organization. But on the other hand, if I instead build this template type of table, and we add new tasks or we take some away, all I have to do now is remove them from my tasks template. And then every time the automation runs from that point on, it will include only the current template information. So I really like using this template as kind of, you know, a behind the scenes, uh, you know, component, if you will, that helps our automations run better, smarter, faster, all of those things. So let's talk about what an automation might look like. What we want to do here is say, look, we've got a name for a new project. We have a project type assigned to it. Let's say it's project one. In this case, we know we would need to create six different tasks for it. We want that automation to perform automatically. Also, we know that we want it to perform because we have information here and here, and we do not have information in our tasks link. If we already create tasks, and link it to this project, then we don't want the automation to run again. This is kind of one of those more advanced things you can keep in the back of your mind when you're building Airtable automations. Make them as foolproof as possible so that they are not triggering uh, when you don't intend for them to. If you make your triggering requirements more specific, the trigger is the thing that initiates the automation. The more specific you make those requirements, the better your automations will be. 
So let's go ahead and hop into automations. In fact, I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab so I can flip between these windows. So popping in here, we're going to build our automation. And the first thing we do is choose that trigger, the thing that initiates or turns on the automation. We have a lot of different options for our trigger, but in our case, we're going to choose when a record matches conditions. There's probably a reason that this is the very top piece here in the inside of the Airtable automation triggers, because this is the one I almost use all the time. What this means is when a record matches very specific conditions that we set forth, then and only then will the automation trigger. Now, that might then uh, stay, like that record might continue to meet those conditions indefinitely. The trigger will only take effect when the record goes from not meeting the conditions to then meeting the conditions. Now, if for some reason, the record then goes back to not meeting the conditions again, and then it flips yet again into meeting the conditions, then it will trigger again. So be aware of this, right? The idea here is if a record is currently not meeting the conditions that you establish, and then it starts to, even if it's done it before, right? Even if it's done this numerous times already, when it flips over and meets those conditions, that triggers the automation. Important to know that it's possible for something to trigger and trigger and trigger over and over again, but understand that it won't trigger immediately into perpetuity. It has to flip back and forth between these two status of meeting conditions and then not meeting conditions. The record, when it meets conditions, will trigger the automation. So let's make that selection. And then we have to tell it what table, and in our case, it's the projects table. Remember, we want to create those tasks once a project meets condition. Now, recall that I said that the more specific we make this trigger, the better it is for us. So the first thing we will say is that the name field is not empty. If there is not text in the name field for this project, then that means that it's not really a project yet. We haven't really put the information in there. We don't want it to trigger the automation. Then we say add a condition. And the next one we'll say is the project type is also not empty. Same thing here. If we haven't filled out a project type, just like if we don't have a name, then we don't want to uh, create the tasks. More to the point here, we won't know what tasks to create because we don't know what type of project it is. But the last one that we mentioned was that the final field here, the tasks, is empty. Remember, if tasks already exist for the project, we don't want to create new tasks because they're here. Okay, so let's see if we can find a record. Now, when you're building an Airtable automation, it's usually beneficial if you go back to your data, make sure that you have a record that meets the criteria that you established. In this case, it has text here. It has a type. There is no task assigned to this. So that would meet our conditions. So when I choose a record, it's going to search and say, well, this is the only record that meets those conditions. So if you have a lot of record meeting those conditions, they will all show up here. I will make that selection. And it's just generally a good rule of thumb to do that step. Number one, it's going to help you understand uh, if your conditions are set up correctly. And number two, it's going to give us some data to play with as we build in the next pieces of the automation. So let's get to work. Now we're going to go into the advanced stuff. And you'll see that there are two things at the top here that I really want to draw our attention to. Number one is conditional logic. For this, we can run specific parts of our automation only if specific conditions are met. So we could set up a rule that says, I only want to do this if it's project one, or I only want to do this if it's project two. The other more advanced logic here is a repeating group. So a repeating group is going to perform for every action on a list. So assuming that we find a list of things first, we will be able to repeat an action for each item that we find in the list. And as you might have already guessed, if we go back to our data, this is the list we're going to be looking for. We want to know if we're finding the task list for project one or project two type, right? So how can we do that? Let's take a look. First, before we get into the advanced looping stuff, we have to first perform the search so we can find records in Airtable. This is definitely a little bit more complicated, but not to fear. So we find these records and over here, we're going to tell it what table we want to find the records in. Now, for us, it's the task templates. So I'm going to flip over to our templates and we're going to find records based on a condition. So I make the selection for condition. Now I have to add the condition. And what I want to find is the tasks in that table that have the same project type that triggered the automation. Remember, the automation triggered on a new project. So we want to search and look at the template for all the different tasks that also have that same project type. 
So we'll go here and we'll say, we're looking at our template table, we're looking at the type, and we wanna make sure that it has any of, and now we're going to click the gear right here and switch over to the dynamic component because static data is gonna be the exact same every time an automation runs. Dynamic data is going to change for every automation. And in our case, we want it to reflect the project type of the trigger. So let's go ahead and choose the dynamic data. I'll hit the plus and over here back on our trigger, that was when a record matches conditions, I wanna find the project type here and I'm gonna bring in that name. So we're bringing in the name of the project type Again, if I flip back to our actual data, the search is gonna look for this project type, project space one, make sure you get your spelling exactly correctly, including spaces and capitalization and all of that. It's gonna look for this value inside of this field. And of course, we know it'll find six different records that contain project one. So if we built that correctly, now we can test that action. So let's give it a test. Airtable brings back six different tasks for us right here. Very cool. Now what we wanna do is create these tasks for our project. We don't wanna create the tasks back here on the task template. No, that wouldn't be very helpful. We need to create the actual tasks inside of the tasks table where we can assign them to people, give them a due date, all of that. By the way, this can all be done with automation. It's outside of the scope of this particular video, but it can be done if you're looking for a more robust uh, task automation system. But for our purpose, we just want to create the tasks and link them back to the project. So let's do that. So here we are going to perform the repeating group. Remember that repeating group will perform for every item we found in the list. In our example, there are six. So let's go repeat. Repeating group, what is it that we're gonna be doing inside of this group? Well, we're going to be creating a record. One record for every record we found in the task template. In other words, we're creating six tasks because we found six tasks assigned to project one in the template. So create record. What table are we creating the records in? The tasks table. What do we need to do when we create the task record? Let's take a look. It's pretty simple for our example. We just need a name and we need to link it to the project. So watch how we do these things because they're vastly different. The first thing is the name. The name is generated or should come from the task template, which is the item that we found in the list here. I have not yet mapped this list to our repeating step. So I need to actually click into the repeating step area. See this little sign, it says, hey, it's not configured right yet. Click here and then it's saying, hey, what's your input list? Like, I don't know how many times I should repeat this because I don't have a list yet. Well, let's select it. It's this, find records use it as a list. And now we say repeat for each item that we find in the list of records. Cool. So we can test the input list and it says, look, I would do this six times because I found six items in that list. It's exactly what we expect. Now, what are we doing when we create this, right? Well, the first part is the name of the thing. And this is going to come from whatever item we are currently iterating on in the list from the template. So we will click here and scroll down over here. Notice that we have the option of current item. This is from the list that we are iterating the repetition on. So we will make that selection and I wanna use the name from that item because we're gonna find six different items in the template and I wanna name six new tasks here. So boom, drop that in. Now the next part is very different. I need to link this task to the project. The project is not coming from the task template. The project instead is coming from the thing that triggered the automation. So make sure that you understand your source here on the left before you go searching on the right. So we are looking for the trigger of our automation and we need to sync up to the project that triggered the automation. The best thing to use here is the record ID. It's a linked record. We could also use the name I prefer not to use names because they could be redundant or uh, duplicative. So I like to use the record ID instead. So we're gonna drop that in, generate a preview, and it would say, look, I would create a new record, uh, but I would do this six times, right? But I would bring in the task name from the template, and then I would bring in the project name from the trigger. All right, 
So that's how we build the repeating component, right? Now, if we want to also add a condition, we cannot because Airtable's automations do not yet allow us to build complicated things that include both of those advanced components. We can't do the list as well as the condition. We can add actions to this group, however, so we can do multiple actions in this group and it will repeat every one of those for every list in this record. Now, the other thing is we cannot add any actions after this list. We cannot add a step after here. So if there was something you wanted to do just one time, you would need to actually add it before here. So maybe you want to assign a project lead to the uh, project as an example. Well, you'd have to add a one-off that happens before the loop. So you can do that simply by clicking above it and adding something. So you could say, you know, update a record or run a script or whatever you need to do, okay? All right, now that's it for our tutorial here. Let's lastly, of course, with every automation we build, we have to test it. So we're gonna turn it on. Strongly, strongly recommend that you name your automations, right? I only keep it this way because this is an example. Uh, and you can also create sections for your automations over here and you can group your automations together so that you can find them more quickly when you need to. But it's time for us to test this out. So we need to make a new record meet these conditions, right? This record currently meets these conditions, but because it met the conditions when I turned the automation on, it's not now meeting the conditions. It hasn't shifted to meeting the conditions. So the automation is not triggering here. However, if I remove this, right, give Airtable a second to think, and then I bring it back in, that will trigger the automation. And just like that, you saw on my screen, the new tasks being linked up to this project. And sure enough, if we go over here, we just created those six tasks. Now, the other thing to test, of course, is what happens if we do the other project. We only have two project, or rather two tasks assigned to that project, and you see that it found them correctly, right? This is all driven by the template. And the reason, again, that I love the template, let's say we want to add a new one. I've got task C now, assigning it to only project two. Is that gonna change any of the uh, data that we uh, already ran previously? Of course not, no. But it will change every time the automation runs from here on out. So now if I go back to projects and I make another project to type, well then it's gonna link up to three different tasks. A, B, and C because I updated my template. So I hope you see the massive value in number one, having a template for this type of automation. And number two, seeing the value behind the more advanced automation features. Conditional logic, the uh, repeating within a group. This is powerful stuff that will save you tons of time if you implement it well. If you have questions I didn't get to, feel free to swing by our website or drop them below. And of course, if you got value from this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It's a great way for you to show some love back. But most importantly, my friends, keep on building.